Welcome back designers. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over several simulation based questions you may expect to see on the Adobe certification test for Adobe Photoshop. These questions are inspired from the 2015 edition, so they may not exactly match what you'll see in the most latest edition of the test. However, they are meant for you to anticipate several of the image editing, topography editing, and other kinds of simulation based tasks you'll be asked to demonstrate on the certification test. So without further ado, let's get started. To get started, I'm going to zoom in on my Challenge 1 artboard. The challenge says, non-destructively change the color of the background layer using the hue and saturation sepia preset. Leave the foreground copy in real color. Now it's asking us to apply an adjustment layer called hue and saturation to only one of these layers, to the background layer. So when you guys have your layers panel open, we're gonna go and look under challenge one and you guys are gonna select the background layer only. That's the only layer that should be affected by the adjustment. I have my adjustments panel open right over here and I'm gonna look for the adjustment called hue and saturation. If you don't have your adjustments panel, you can go to Window and Adjustments to look for it. I'm going to click on the Hue and Saturation Adjustment. And instead of adjusting the Hue and Saturation just by eyeballing it, I'm going to look under the Presets menu. And I'm going to look for a preset called Sepia. Sepia, as you can see, is going to turn the background image into a black and white old-fashioned photocopy. Because I applied it to the background only, you'll see that the foreground layer with the cows is still listed in its vivid high contrast colors. It's asking us to leave the foreground copy in real color, so we're not going to be applying any more edits to the image. In order for you guys to answer this correctly, you just need to make sure you'll have selected the background layer first so that the hue and saturation sepia preset will be applied only to the background, as you can see in the stacking order, and will not apply to the actual copy of the cows in the foreground. Moving right along, we're going to be working on challenge two. Challenge two says, adjust the format of the word blooming so the font is Arial Black and the font size is 72 points. In order to make any changes to the topography, we need to make sure the layer is selected that says Blooming under the Challenge 2 artboard. I'm going to use my Type tool and I'm going to double click to highlight the word. In the Options bar, I'm going to be looking for a different font. It's telling me to select Arial Black. Arial Black Regular is a font. So I'm going to be selecting it and you'll see that the words look a little bit bolder now. Then I'm going to select 72 points and I'm going to type in return or enter on your keyboard and you'll see that now the text is significantly larger. Once you have entered your changes, you're able to move on to the next challenge. Moving right along, challenge 3 says, reduce the opacity of the layer containing the headline, we're all about color, to about 50%. If we look under the challenge 3 artboard, we have two layers. We have a photo layer called Gummy Bears, and we have a layer called We're All About Color. It's asking us to reduce the opacity to 50%. So with that layer selected, the one that says We're All About Color, we're going to go on the Layers panel, and where it says Opacity, the default for which is 100 points, or 100% rather, we're going to type in 50, and you'll see that the text is going to get a little bit more faded and blend in a little bit more with the image underneath it. We're going to press enter on our keyboard and that will have set our changes. So we're able to move on to the next challenge. Challenge 4 says, adjust the tracking on the layer named headline to 480 points by spreading the letters out without making them wider. To adjust the tracking, we have to double click inside of the layer called Headline using our Type tool and highlight it. We're going to be looking for our Character panel. Our Character panel can be found right over here in the Options bar. You can also go to Window and Character to look for it. The tracking is going to set the space in between each letter form. Right now the tracking is set to 0 at its default. 
to set it to 480, we're going to type in 480 next to the tracking and press enter to save our changes. In so doing, we'll see that we'll have added space uniformly in between each letter form. And that completes your task. On to challenge five. Challenge five is pretty complicated, so please pay very close attention. It states, use the save selection named Donut1 to non-destructively mask the checkered tablecloth background around the donut shape and make it serve as a letter O in shop. So here's what we basically have under challenge five. We have this layer with the letters S, H, a space, and then P. So it's clearly missing the letter O. Then we have the checkerboard background layer. So the implication is that whoever created this document created a selection called donut, which kind of looks like an O. And we have to load the selection when loaded, we're going to create a mask in the checkerboard background so that the checkerboard is going to serve as a letter O. So the first step here is to look for that selection. We're going to make sure we select our checkerboard layer. Then we're going to go to the select menu at the top of the workspace. And to look for the selection, we're going to click load selection. Under channel, you will see a selection called donut one. We're going to select donut one and we're going to click OK. Having made that selection, you can now see that there's the vague shape of a donut in here, substituting as the O. The last step is for us to create a mask. So with the checkerboard layer background selected, I'm going to go down to the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to click the layer mask icon and that will have effectively placed a checkerboard tablecloth inside of the letter O shape created from the donut selection. I hope I explained that to you guys as best as I could. I know it's a very complex question because it has many moving parts. Hit me up in class if you need further clarification. Challenge six has us mess around with our typographic settings a little further. You can see that in challenge six, we have an ellipse and we have some text that's wrapped around the ellipse. So what we need to do is we, we need to add a little bit of space in between the text and the ellipse. The challenge says, adjust the baseline of the text and set it to 20 points. Then toggle the visibility of the ellipse layer. So the first thing we have to do is we need to select the text layer under challenge six. To do so, I'm going to click on my type tool and I'm going to double click on the text in order to highlight it. In my options bar, I'm going to toggle open my character panel. And this is where my baseline is set. You can see right now it's set to zero points, which means that the text is basically touching the circle. I'm going to type in 20 points and press enter on my keyboard which you'll see will have spaced out the text so it's no longer touching the ellipse. To complete the second part of the prompt, all I have to do is make the ellipse invisible by clicking on the little eyeball next to the ellipse. And now all that's left visible in the artboard is the text that's wrapping around kind of like in a C. And that completes the challenge. On to challenge seven. Challenge seven says, Adjust the opacity of the woman's image to 40% with a blend mode of vivid light. So if we look at the artboard for challenge seven, we can see that there's a layer of a woman right above a picture of a field. And it's basically asking us to blend the woman with the field, create kind of a transparency effect. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to alter the blend mode of the woman we have to select the woman layer and in the layers panel, we're going to go where it says normal right up here, which is the default blend mode. We're going to select the one that they're asking for, which is vivid light, which you can see creates this transparency effect where I can see the flowers through the woman. Then where it says opacity, I'm going to type in 40% and press enter on my keyboard to further enhance that transparency effect. And that is gonna go and answer challenge seven. 
Challenge 8 says, Center the title and the subtitle. Then set the color of the letters to the dark red of the image using red 96, green 2, and blue 12. So we have basically two parts in order to complete this task. The first thing we have to do is to select the text layer. I'm going to be using my type tool and I'm going to be highlighting the text layer. Then I'm going to select the middle option right over here in my options bar that's going to center the text because currently it's flushed all the way to the right. So I'm going to click center text. After that, I'm going to click inside of this little swatch right here and you can see that the units for red, green, blue have been inputted for this beige creamy color. So instead of a hex code, I'm going to be entering 96 as my unit for red, 2 as my unit for green, and 12 as my unit for red so that it matches the same dark red that's being used in the petals on the rose. Hold on tight because we have yet another difficult challenge in challenge 9. Challenge 9 says, use the magic wand tool to non-destructively mask the white background around the outside of the bagel so that it serves as the letter O in shop. So similar to the previous challenge, we're basically substituting the shape of the bagel in order to serve as an O. But you can see how the O, the bagel itself is surrounded by this white background. So we basically have to eliminate it. It's asking us to do so non-destructively using the masking technique. And it's also specifically telling us to use the magic wand tool so that we can select the majority of the white background. So the first thing we need to do is select the bagel layer. Then we're going to be using tool number three, which is our magic wand. And we're going to click anywhere in the white. Magic wand, as you know, is going to basically sample any of any color. You can see that it selected most of the white background, but it still has that little sliver of white in the hole. In order for me to select that little sliver, I have to go to the select menu at the top of my workspace and select similar. Now all of the white is selected. But here's the thing. If I hit the mask thumbnail now, it's going to basically mask out everything but the bagel. So I'm going to go to the select menu one more time and I'm going to click inverse. So now everything outside the bagel is selected and I know it's selected because I can see the marching ants around my artboard. The last step is for me to go and click the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel and that will have effectively masked out everything white and just left the bagel. I know that was a little difficult, watch it again if you need to. Wave me down in class if you need further assistance. Challenge 10 says, make the image into a smart object. Then apply a non-destructive radial blur to the image using 5 as your amount. I'm going to select the woman layer. And right now you can see the woman layer is just a normal image layer. I'm going to convert it to a smart object so that when I do edits to the image, they're going to be done non-destructively, meaning that it's going to be easier for me to make edits to the image later if I change my mind. To convert it to a smart object, I'm going to right click on the woman layer and I'm going to select convert to smart object. Having done so, I can go to the filters menu, select blur, radio blur, and then you can put in whatever amount you're, it's asking for. Let's say it's asking for an amount of five, you can click OK. And you can see that the blur is going to apply to the image completely so that it's no longer recognizable as a woman. Because we converted the image to a smart object before, if I click the little eyeball icon next to the smart filter, I'll be able to see the original image without any problems whatsoever. That's a benefit of working non-destructively. All right, designers, I hope that gave you insight into the types of questions you may expect to see on the Adobe Photoshop certification test. Now that you're done editing each of these artboards, it's time for us to export our final draft. 
To do so, we're going to go to File, Export. We're going to select Artboards to PDF. Under Browse, we're going to click our desktop, or if you have a flash drive, plug it in and save it to your flash drive. And we're going to call this Finished 2015 Cert Prep Template. We're going to make sure that it says Multi-Page Documents, and we're going to click Run. As you know, Photoshop is processing all of the information in our artboards and exporting that information as pages in a PDF document. So you're going to see it blinking. Don't worry, that's perfectly normal. When it's finished, we're going to see a message that says Artboards to PDF was successful. You guys are going to go upload your final multi-page PDF to me on Schoology. Hit me up if you guys have any questions. For now, peace out.